Okay, maximum recording time has reached. I'm just going into. Uh, hmm, I hadn't zoomed out. Sorry, so you didn't see what was going on. Okay, we've reinforced here and here, essentially. And this looks like it's going to be the denouement. Okay, this is interesting. The teleport tower. That's a stronghold upgrade. And that would go on the stronghold. And this one allows you to teleport any creature there to a turn shield immediately. That's a handy ability. But that gives us 11 up card points versus 14 here in the Phantom Stalker. So um, Rachnan's going first. Let's just go for the win. I don't think we need to drag it out any longer. Let's just see if it happens. So he's going to turn those and they're going to move through to fight Tuchel. So um, going to our combat board, we have the attacker here, Tuchel here. Well, he's only got one. We're going to send in. Black Unicorn and Tuchel doesn't have any defenders with him so the Black Unicorn and I think this is how you play out uh, fighting your enemy guardian Black Unicorn channels twice giving him 18 to add to his 13 brings him up to 31 versus Tuchel's vitality of 27 and he is destroyed so um, that is um, a bit disappointing it was over so quickly but it is um, very demonstrative of, of uh, the major failing I find of collectible, collectible card games and particularly card game war games in particular is that um, you're so dependent on what you draw from your deck uh, that a lot of the game is determined by that, it's the luck of the draw. Now, um, upfront is different from that uh, and other upfront like games in that you start with a hand of cards, you start with your forces down on the, the table already and it's only the actions which will deter is, the, that is the card draw. So here um, I'm trying to get my forces and my actions from the deck so everything is in that sense is dependent on the deck the other benefit that upfront has is that you're looking in the main for movement cards fire cards and okay yes terrain cards and the thing is, is that there's many of each of those here there's only one card of each kind so you know if you if your deck is built about around one or two cards, if you don't get those cards out, it never happens. In up front, if your strategy is dependent on um, movement, there's a lot of movement cards. You're going to get some. It's just when you get them and how many you get, how quickly you get them. So the luck of the card draw is mitigated in up front and up front light games. Um, such as, for example, Combat Commander. Uh, these games, uh, card, collectible card games were uh, a new and novel thing and um, mostly they're working on similar sort of tropes. You have your deck, you draw from your deck, that's your hand, you play from your hand to uh, determine your forces and in this case your, it also determines with the shields your manoeuvre capability and um, as in most of them, your, your combat capability too, and adding extra items into combat. And so, as we can see, Ratnam, he, he already had a benefit in, um, he got an early benefit in the number of disputed lands, which gave him extra cards, draw over two call. Um, I think he probably, he had more cards than two call drawn out in it, and uh, he had, Powerful cards too. Tuchel didn't. If he brought out the teleport, that might have helped. If he had shields earlier on, that might have helped. So these games, I really like the, the hidden app movement, um, the building up forces in the shields, and the tactical um, dimension of this game. And I, I, I really like um, the combat uh, 
as well and you have a group of fellows and you can add into that but as it stands it falls down as in, in all these like uh, card games in that respect and, and it's the frustration of the card draw and you feel like Tuchel lost because he didn't get the cards he needed Ratnam won because he got the cards he needed rather than um, great uh, tactics or strategy that could be uh, mitigated by playing this differently like I did um, in the game prior to the video where I put the terrain down at the beginning so we already had um, uh, something interesting happening apart from waiting to get the cards out of the deck you could also mitigate that again by saying okay you can choose your starting forces or perhaps you have um, you cut your deck and so out of out of that half deck you choose 12 of starting forces anything like that or you could say everybody has three shields to start so everybody has the same maneuverability at the start you might be lucky and get greater later but at least you're both starting on a parity if one fellow starts with shields and the other doesn't you're at a big disadvantage because they will immediately move out and get undisputed territory get the most disputed lands draw benefit um, so there are things you can do to mitigate that, obviously, house rulings, and I think it would be worth um, playing these games with those. Um, the, uh, the trouble is, I, you know, this game's not going to get played that much, that any opponent who I do sort of play it up against might want to just try the base game rather than any house rule tweaks that I bring in it. And um, I don't know. Anyway... You get the picture, um, that is the game, uh, uh, obviously a lot depends on the cards you had, okay, we had mountains of terrain at the back there, we had a sacrificial altar we could have brought out, that gives extra power stones by sacrificing um, cards in your hand, you get uh, um, slippery slime, it can switch places with a creature and so forth. Um, Great fun, uh, but um, quite chaotic and draw a card draw dependent. So that is it. That is a look at Guardians, the uh, dead collectible card game, and an entry in my card game war games category. Um, really, because of the terrain and the tactical manoeuvre that is enabled through that. You're trying to get to to the enemy's base camp supply source, um, break through their their rear lines and move up, or destroy their uh, main force or take the terrain and um, so win on maneuver combat or um, breakthrough. There you go, guardians.